Hey everyone, it's Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. Welcome to episode 29 of the Ginger and the Beard podcast. I'm AJ, aka the Ginger. And I'm Reese, aka the Beard. This is a special midweek episode where we we will be reviewing and giving our impressions on the Craft of Brew beer kits. That's right. We'll be covering the contents of the box, the process of brewing with the kit, and our experience doing this ourselves just this week. So stick around. Hey, let's do it. Oh man, this is exciting. Special midweek episode in place of our typical weigh-ins episode this Tuesday. We decided to do a special review episode of the Craft of Beer Beer Kits. But before we dig into that, how's your week so far, man? Uh, Week's good, man. Nice and chill. Um, You know, not much to talk about just yet. We're just so... You know, we're not very far into the week. I mean, the highlights of my week so far is <laughs> brew and beer. And I've been playing a lot of Fallout 76. They just came out with another update. So that's super nice. cool. Um, and the sky is full of smoke. Weird. Did you see that? At your at your house? No, nah, man. Like all over the east coast of the United States now. Did you see that on the news where it's like... No. Like yesterday I went outside. It was all hazy and I was like... Hmm, this is weird. There's like no clouds, but it's like super hazy. That's um, strange. And then I saw today that it's because of all the forest fires out west. The smoke is has made its way to the east coast and it has filled that's, the skies. That's wild, man. Yeah, yeah, I did see that the pictures from California, like apocalyptic looking, that orange hazy color. So thoughts to everyone out there for sure. Uh I think Oregon also, right, had some crazy fires. Yeah, that whole but, all uh, that over there is crazy man insane um yeah fortunately for us we don't have to deal with that very often on the east coast yeah um but thinking of you guys out there on the west coast for sure but yeah same same kind of goes for me man the week hasn't really we haven't done much but yesterday i took the day off my wife and i took the day off just to celebrate it's like birthday month sort of situation um so we went to the went out for breakfast went to the beach brewed that beer we're gonna talk about and just kind of chilled out man it was a pretty relaxing day so today was like my monday back at work which is always which is always good that's the pits yeah man yesterday sounds like (laughs) it was a fantastic day that was all that's awesome yep it was good it was good but um i'm drinking a little bit bit of beer i think you're drinking a little bit of beer you want to talk about that really quick before we dive into our beer that we brewed yeah guys so uh drinking a beer here i got the bavarian prince um oktoberfest beer by new realm brewing company i like new realm this is probably the third beer that i've had from them and uh they haven't let me down yet so uh i haven't haven't tasted it yet but we're going to here in a second um but i love this can you know that is a nice can cool looking traditional style can got some good information over here this is a 6.3 percent abv um the color is is deep amber i poured it already so you can see very deep amber it looks amazing Nice. Looks really good. It's 100% German malts and hops. They're saying it pairs well with pretzels. I think that's kind of obvious. Pork dishes, <laughs> ending in schnitzel or worst. That's cool. <laughs> and dancing and lederhosen. I don't even know what that means, but uh, I gotta go look it up now. Um, <laughs> is that like tight lederhosen? Is that like tights? Or something like that. <laughs> Probably, but it also it gives one more description. It says Oktoberfest beer, named for uh, Crown Prince uh, because it says the Bavarian Prince. Um, named for Crown Prince Ludwig, the original honoree of the first Oktoberfest celebrations, Bavarian Prince is a Marzen-style Oktoberfest lager brewed in the German tradition. This amber lager is malty, biscuity, and toasty with floral hop notes. Man, they're selling biscuity. They sold me on the can, dude. Yeah, man. Now you just need to get yourself some Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> oh, dude, they have not let me down. I know you probably got this down there by you, dude, so you got to make sure to buy this. Yeah, I have to pick that up. Yeah, this is great. That's awesome. I am having the Higher Plane IPA from New Belgium. This is actually one of the, I guess it's another, I don't know if just because it has the Voodoo Ranger guy on it, if that means it's part of like the Voodoo Ranger series or not, but I guess it is. Yeah. Um, no description. Oh, yeah, it says Voodoo Ranger right there. I guess, so, I guess it is. 
no description whatsoever. I didn't research anything about this beer, but I can tell you it's delicious. It's hazy. It's not quite as hazy as I was expecting it to be, but uh, very smooth, nice and bitter on the finish. Like it a lot. Do you um, do you know? Is there Voodoo Ranger series all IPAs? I I haven't had any. I think any. so. Okay. I think so. Yeah, they have a lot of one, a lot of interesting ones. There's one that's like an eight something. 1875 i can't think of the name of it right now but it's kind of it's kind of strange to me but um yeah I, I love their can art and design and, and all that stuff their voodoo ranger brand is pretty legit if you follow you can follow voodoo ranger himself on instagram Whoa. pretty cool stuff what? yeah really really cool voodoo is that like a that's like voodoo a voodoo ranger that's like yeah, a person he's this guy you can't really see him. He looks this guy right here. Is he like a samurai? What's he got going on? He he's a skeleton, dude. Yeah, and and this and this ad- adaptation, he's wearing like some kind of a sam- samurai garb, but uh, he's always wearing something different. Usually, he's like wearing he's always wearing those aviators. Sometimes he's got like leather jackets on. Nice. Just really cool branding. He's got really that neat. hops just floating there, like a it's all glowing and stuff, like a kamehameha yeah. or something. Man, that's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. It tastes really delicious. But uh, that's not where the beer ends today. We're here to talk about Craft A Brew Beer Kit. Yes. If you guys don't remember, make sure you rewind. Not wasn't last episode. The episode before last. The yeah. September 4th episode. I think it's titled Surprise Birthday Gift, actually. Um, I turned 30 this month, and my man, the beard here, sent me a surprise gift, which I unboxed live on the show. It was a Craft A Brew Beer Kit which I had never actually heard of until opening that box. And come to find out, it's a homebrew kit. It's made super easy. Even a dummy like myself can figure it out. And you and I both did a thing yesterday. We, oh, sorry, I should re- I should rewind and say, you bought, got one for yourself as well. And uh, we both did a thing yesterday and brewed those kits. Oh, dude, I know, man. I'm so excited to talk <laughs> about it. But yeah. before we get into that, I want to remind you guys to follow our show here on Twitch, like and subscribe on YouTube, and also subscribe on your favorite podcast player. If you really want to help us grow, share this episode with a friend. We would really appreciate that, guys. And as always, we appreciate your support, and we're glad you're here with us. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Man, you want to... Let's dive in, dude. Let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) So for starters, I guess I, I should say the one that you got me was the, well, f- for those who don't know, Crafted, Crafted Brew Kits, you should check them out. I think it's craftedbrew.com actually. Uh, I may have to double check that, but check out their website. They've got tons of different recipe kits that you can get, but the one that you ordered for me was the Oak Aged IPA. Um, I believe the estimated ABV for it was 7.5%, I believe. I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. Um and so, yeah, I really wasn't sure what to expect with this, but it, you know, going into it, I had this hesitation and I mentioned it on a show even before you got that for me. Like we happened to be talking about brewing our own beer and I'm like, I don't know, dude, number one, I don't live in a very giant house. Like, I don't know that I have actually room for an operation to brew the beer. And number two, I'm f- afraid that after brewing said beer, I may go on a quick downward spiral, spiral <laughs> or upward, depending on how you look at it, of a craft brewing obsession. <laughs> and turns out only one of those two things are true, and that is the spiraling addiction. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But uh, yeah, I was hesitant, and, and I'm happy to say, though, it was not nearly as hard as I was expecting it to be. Yeah, man. It was super simple. I was so happy. You did yours like right before I did mine, and you were like, "Yeah, I got it, man." It didn't even take that long, and I was like, "Yeah, oh, okay, I got to do mine now, definitely." This is so yeah. cool, um, and and it was so funny because like, like you said, dude, literally a week ago, dude, you were saying, um, it was a week before I sent it to you. You said that you would go down this like spiraling path, and I was like thinking in my head like, "Oh, <laughs> here we go." <laughs> And you had already placed the order, right? Yeah, I had already placed the order. So I was like, oh, shit. Okay, well, all right. Well, we'll see how this plays out. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun getting it there. You know, um, my wife had to coordinate with your wife to make sure that you didn't see it. And, and you know, there were some issues with it getting there and everything. But, uh, you know, come, you know, we were live. And then she brought it out to you. And boom, there it yep. was. 
Perfect timing. It was Perfect great. timing. It was great. Yeah, um, man. So which one did you get? So I had, like I said, the Oak Aged IPA. You had something different. Yeah, so I had a chocolate milk stout. Um, yours, you said, was about 7 It was going to be 7%. They're telling me that mine uh, was, is going to be 5.5%. Um, you know, mine is very dark, just like you can't see through it at all already, which you guys will see, you know, very soon. Um, but my house smelled amazing. Um, <laughs> you know, I had to add lactose to it. I have to add cocoa to it here in a week or so. Uh, we'll oh, get, man. we'll get a little bit more into that, but you know, the malts and the hops, the hops, I smelled both. I had two packages of hops and they were just oh, it smelled so good. My house was, it smelled like, it was like a caramel kind mm. of like a malty, just like, like a, like sweet bread kind of smell throughout my house. And, um, like I woke up today and I still had the, I still had that in my nose for some reason. And it was, <laughs> it was pleasant. I was very happy. It's something I want to smell again someday. Yeah. I literally told my wife, I was like, they need to make a hop candle. And sure enough, I looked it up and there are some people on Etsy who make hop scented candles. So I definitely am going to be a buyer of that relatively soon. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yours sounds like it smells even better than mine did with that caramel and cocoa and stuff like that. That sounds so good. We're definitely going to have to trade beers once this is all over with. Yeah. So I think um, a gallon, uh, I think we looked it up before. A gallon should translate to like 12 bottles, right? I think so. Yeah. Roughly 12. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I, you know, I'm definitely going to put away probably a six pack of that and yep. just hand it out to people. And then I'll probably keep a six pack for myself to drink and enjoy. Um, but I definitely, now that we have the kit, dude, I mean, if you oh, go, this is, this is, like I said, spiraling. I, yeah. I already, I literally already want to go and order another one, a whole other kit. So that way I have two carboys. I have, we'll get, we're about to get into the contents of the box. I want to have all, like, I want to have two times the equipment so I can constantly have a rotation of two brews at the same time. Oh, absolutely. And you can, yeah. now that we have the, the big kit with like everything, Oh, so you're going to buy a whole nother kit. Oh, snap, dude. Oh, I don't know. May, I might not. But, like, you have to wait. I feel like we're, we're getting a little bit ahead just because yeah. the timing. But you have to wait for a deferment. So, like, while you're waiting, you could go ahead and have another one started up. So, I could, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you had two kits. And is, and if you have the – once you buy, like, the, the first kit, you can go on – and you were right. It was craftabrew.com. You can go on there and you can just buy the recipes for – you know, like a third of the price of the full yeah. kit. And so you could, you know, every, every month, basically you're buying one of these kits for 15 bucks and you got beer, you know, to last you, uh, you know, a 12 pack, a 12, however long a 12 packs, however long it takes you to enjoy a 12 pack, then 15 right. bucks, man. But it's, it's yours. You, I mean, I think the experience is totally worth it, man. I love it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You're paying for the experience, you know? I mean, not really. It feels like you're paying just enough for the ingredients. It does. It's not overpriced at all. I was shocked at how affordable it actually is. Right. Um, and the experience is a, an added an added benefit for sure yeah. for somebody that's a, a craft beer fan. Well, yeah, because think about it. Like, if you go buy a six, a six pack of craft beer, it's going to be right around ten fifteen dollars anyway. You know. Exactly. So you're getting a twelve pack for for less than you would you know that way. So, and then I mean, think about if you buy the ingredients uh, in bulk you know oh yeah for sure have it last you six months anyway yep. <laughs> going on a tangent <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into the contents of the box so i think the contents of the box sh between you and i should have been relatively similar with the exception of some different flavorings and spices and, and things like that so you guys can see here on the screen if you're watching live on twitch or watching on youtube if you're listening in the car i would suggest go ahead and finish out the episode Share with a friend, but then go back and watch the video version because we're going to be showing pictures of, of our supplies and process and things like that on the video. So right now on the screen, you're seeing the unboxed con contents. Um, so which essentially when it comes to ingredients included a seasoning grains. Uh, I think mine were like oak, oak grains, oak uh, flavored grains. Um, it, it contained a bag of yeast, malt extract, hops. Mine included three bags of hops. You said yours included two, I believe. Yeah, I had two bags. Um, so that's what it comes with in terms of ingredients alone. 
And then mine also came with some oak chips, which I will be adding into the fermenting uh, wort, uh, I think, after a week. Right. And so that, does that line up with what yours included? Uh, fairly closely, you know, just kind of replace a thing here or there, because um, you didn't have lactose. Mine, uh, I had to right. add lactose with the uh, with the malt when I was stirring in the malt. Um, and then, you know, when you add your cocoa chips, I'll be, I'm sorry, when you add your oak chips, I'll be adding my cocoa nibs, um, <laughs> you know, in, in a week from now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, it gives you a thermometer also, the thermo, the thermometer, eh, thermometer yep. is, was <laughs> like hugely important. I feel like it was like, you could do this with just having, if you just had a thermometer, you could do most of this. Yeah. Um, you know, and if you had a thermometer and, a, and the carboy, it's like you're pretty much good to go. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the funnel, the funnel was hugely helpful. One thing that they don't tell you about um, straight up front and they don't provide is the uh, is like a mesh screen. So did you use a did you use a colander at all? No, I did not. I um, actually after I boiled mine, which we're going to get into the process here in a second. But after I boiled mine, it really was not that much sludge quote unquote at the bottom of mine. So I was able to just pour most of it straight into the carboy without having too much to worry about. I probably could have, I don't I actually just didn't have a mesh strainer. Otherwise I probably would have used it, but um, I guess this will be one of those unfiltered IPAs that we've talked about on the show before. Nice dude. Mine had tons of sludge. It was like a really? couple, it was like probably like a half cup of sludge at the bottom. Did you strain it or was it literally just sitting at the bottom of the boil? It was sitting at the bottom of the, sitting at the bottom of the boil. Um, it was just the malt and the hops and the, and the lactose. And so when I poured it out, I, I poured it into the funnel through a strainer. And so the strainer caught most of it. Well, pretty much all of it. And it was just like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so the boil didn't break down everything. I'm not sure why that is, but, uh, Yeah. Hopefully, um, hopefully I did it right. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it probably is, dude. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Um, so I think that basically covers what was included. Yeah, I think the only other thing going in that you should know is not included, which they're pretty upfront about, is there's no bottles included. So literally, you've got everything you need to brew, but you have to purchase bottles separately. So they actually give you a, the name of a beer. It's Grolsch beer. I've never had Grolsch beer. I don't know if I've ever actually seen it, but apparently it's available in Total Wine near me. Okay. Um, It has a swing top lid instead of a cap. So it's like this metal fixture that you pop, you flip open, and it releases sort of like a corking mechanism. You can pull it out and you put it back on. You, 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 you know, you, you flip the little metal piece back down and it applies the pressure to hold it in. Um, so that's what they suggest you using, I guess, because that way you can reuse it and you don't have to worry about a capping set. But if you prefer to have just regular caps on your bottles, you can buy all of that through um, craftabrew.com. They sell bottles and they sell a capping kit. Um, and I looked at the prices on there. I looked at prices of Grolsch beer, number one, and to buy 12 bottles worth of Grolsch beer was going to cost me like 40 some dollars, I think. Um, to buy the bottles by themselves. Actually, I think I'm lying to you. I think it was like thirty some dollars to buy for the twelve dollars. Yeah, twelve dollars or twelve bottles worth of Grolsch was like thirty some dollars to buy just the bottles, which people are selling on eBay and Amazon that have the swing top lids on them. Um, was going to be more expensive than actually buying the beer from the store. So I'm like, hmm. Which, I mean, beer or no beer, empty bottles, full bottles. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> well, the bottling, I, the bottling kit's 30 bucks. I was going to say, yeah. But then I went to their website. If you get the bottling kit, which includes 12 bottles and caps, and think, I think also the capping tool right. is 30, 30 bucks. So you're way better off just buying that, which I believe is what I'm going to end up doing. And I think it comes with 50 lids Oh, or yeah. 50 caps. So you it's, actually can do multiple bottles like yeah. processes of bottles and then they sell caps individually as well on their website. So you can just restock your caps once you get low. It says Which, uh, it, enough for three batches. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's the way I'm going to go. I'm just going to go to the website again and buy the bottling set and just replenishing my caps as I need them because it seems like honestly the most cost-effective solution. 
Yeah. Um, I hadn't really thought about it yet. I was just going to go on like, you know, Amazon and buy some, but I think I'd rather support this company and I think I'd yeah. rather just do this. Yeah. And honestly, it seems like the most cost effective means of getting it. So, yeah. But, and just having yeah. that capper, that like that tool, I mean, mm -hmm. that's worth the 30 bucks in itself. I feel like. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Well, I think we should, uh, I think that about covers the contents of the box. I mean, I think they did a great job packaging everything up there. Also, we should mention is a five gallon option. They do sell five gallon kits. So if you want to brew more than, you know, one gallon at a time, you can definitely do that as well. But I think we should start talking about the brewing process. Yeah. Well, we're, real quick on that note, I'm just wondering how, I don't know if I'd have a pot big enough for five gallons. Like that seems, <laughs> that seems extreme. I feel like you would need some additional tools, but I'll have to go look at that and find out. Um, but yeah, yep. man, let's get into it. Let's do this. Yes. So, yeah, so. Just, on that note though, I, I remember brewing beer with a buddy of mine and he had a giant, I think it was called a mash pot. I think it was six gallons or something like that. So you could fit enough. I mean, it was a huge ma a monster pot. But yeah, anyways. All right, so brewing the brewing process itself, I will show here. It com the kit comes with this step-by-step -step, um what does it say? A no-nonsense guide to brewing your own beer. And I basically lived and died by this book for that 3-hour process of brewing. It provides great step-by-step -step instructions on how to do everything. Um and just really simple, easy to read. It's no, like, like I said, it's no nonsense. I mean, I've definitely seen books and books of like how to brew beers. If you were, if you're a crazy home brewer, you know, likes to experiment with different stuff, that's maybe more your speed. But for somebody who's brand new into it, this is a great, you know, explainer process for you. So the first step was obviously boiling water. And for me, it, my, my package came with, um, some grain and a cheesecloth and you put that cheesecloth, which looks like here, you've got the image on screen. Yours had something similar. Um, you put that, put those grains in that cheesecloth, tie a knot, and then let it steep at a certain temperature. I don't remember exactly what the temperature was. I think it was like 155 or something like that. Um, yeah, for 155. 20 minutes. Yeah, yep, exactly. 155 for 20 minutes. Yep. We're going to teach so, you guys if you're listening. You guys will be able to brew after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um yeah, so I think for me, the waiting was the hardest part. It's like that Tom Petty song. I think it's Tom Petty. Waiting is the hardest part. Uh, uh, barf when I no. hear myself singing. Uh. No, that was awesome, dude. That was awesome. <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. Somebody sign me now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure More it's Tom that. Petty. More Anyways, of that. <laughs> so just, br just like getting my water up to that temperature was like I had to take the pot on and off of the burner number one i don't have a great stove so it's not it was not super easy to control yeah so i was like literally had half the pot on the burner at some points of it like just trying to even it out um because you have to like babysit the pot at this point and make sure it doesn't drop temperature or go too high up um did you have any issues on your end with that dude i did the same thing man where i basically got it up to like 155 but then like it overshot and it kept going up and i was like oh no so it got up to like 165 so then I just took it off, right? And I let it sit yeah. there. But it took like 15 minutes for it to go back down. Yeah. So it was just, it basically just sat off the burner like the whole time. And it was like yeah. at the right temperature. And then it started going back down. I put it on there for a little bit. But man, yeah, that was, pr I think that was probably the hardest part to regulate is getting exactly. it at that 155. I'm, I'm right there with you. One yeah. thing I'm noticing though is the color difference between what, what you had um, for your grains and what I had for my grains, I'm interested to know like why my grains, you know, my grains, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> why did my grains have, you know, such a dark color to them? Like as soon as I put it in there, it just like was just pouring out of the bag, like this dark yeah. misty, you know, color, just getting into all of the other water, which was really, that was fun to watch by the way. I like that. Yeah, definitely. No, I think it's probably just like the different flavors or whatever they, they put on the grains or different grains they choose for different different flavors, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um so that was that was the first part. And then after that, after it's steeped for twenty minutes, you take the grains out, you remove the you don't you don't squeeze them because they can put like different sub stuff in there that you, tannins that you don't want. Um and then you bring the water up to a boil. 
barely to just... a boil. They say literally once you see the first boiling bubble, you take it off. Yeah. And then yeah. um you can go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say at that point, I think they call it wort. I think it's called wort at that point. Um, you add in your malt ext- extract. So I'm assuming the two of us probably had different malts. Your malts must have more of a caramely sort of note to them. Um, you can see here on the screen, the two of us, you know, stirring in while you pour in your malts, you have to stir it to make sure it doesn't clump up. And, um, once it's completely dissolved within the water, you, I think at that point you bring it to a, it was, you bring it to a slow rolling boil, right? Yeah. And, and so my picture on screen right now is, um, so right after I put the malt in, I put the lactose in cause that was the, that was the steps for me. But yeah, so you take it off the burner, you add the malt or lactose if you have to, um, you mix it in, make sure it's all, you don't want any clumping. And then you're right. You put it back on the burner and that's when you get it up to, that's when you want to get it to a rolling boil. And then that's when you have the next step, which is to um, add the hops. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So I, I will say I had a misstep here. I was reading this book. I was completely focused. I knew I could not do this when my kids were at home because I'd be too distracted. The book said, be careful not to let your, your, your wart boil, boil over or you will have a sticky mess. Um, so I was watching it and watching it and waiting for it to boil, waiting and waiting and waiting. My stove was like running at max capacity and, um, just out of nowhere like it was totally fine then it's out of nowhere just started rising 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 and uh, i start to do what it says in the book it's like blow on, blow on the foam it'll help and like take it off turn the heat off and blow on it so i did that it was useless it boiled over all over my stove oh no <laughs> dude oh no and it, and it was a pretty i mean i pulled it off the burner like almost immediately so like it went down pretty quickly but definitely had a little bit of a mess to clean up in a hurry and then returned it back to heat and turned the heat way down and eventually was able to get it to a slow rolling boil, but it was definitely a process. Yeah. So mine was uh, kind of similar where I like, I got it all set. And so, you know, the, the, the next step after you get it to a rolling boil is you add your first packet of yeast. Right. And so. Oh, you, wait, I didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. Mm-mm. Interesting. Okay. So for mine, for some reason I had to add the yeast like pretty much immediately after I got it up to a slow rolling boil and like I went and sat down and talked to my wife for literally like 30 seconds and I go back in and it was like about to explode. I was like, Oh no. (laughs) Um, and I used the lid the whole time on mine. Um, so the only, the only issue that I really had was my lid for some reason, like the water kept like getting into the rim and then the rim was boiling. So the water was just like shooting all over the place. Oh, no. um, and then beyond that, so the way that my hops worked, I might be getting a little bit ahead of you, but I wanted to say this, but I had to add the first packet and then set a 60 minute timer. And then after 30 minutes, I had to add my second packet and that was it. So yeah. in between me adding the first packet and the second packet, I realized I didn't have any ice, which we're going to get oh, into no. here in a second. So <laughs> I had Stephanie watch it while I ran to the store to get ice. Oh, Is that man. how it went for you? <laughs> I had ice. I had ice, fortunately. Okay, so just to be clear, a minute ago you said you had to add your first packet of yeast. Did you mean hops? I meant hops. My bad. Okay. Did okay. I say yeast? I was like, I'm I sorry. Was like, yeah, you said yeast. I was like, no, I didn't have to do that. So, yeah, similar. Similar. I, I, built, I started my boil, set the timer for 60 minutes. My first package of hops, I believe, I could look through the, pack, through the booklet if I wanted to, but I think it, mine didn't go in until the 30-minute mark. Um, your first packet, my first packet. Oh, wow. Okay. I could be lying to you guys. So instead I'm just going to open this package here, open this booklet because it tells you exactly what to do. Um, I'm lying to you. Yes. The first packet of hops went in at the 60 minute timer. Then another one at 30 minutes, the booklet says 15 minutes, but my actual hot package said 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah. And then my last packet went in with two minutes left in the boil. And that's where I actually screwed up again. I, I'm not good at math. I'm going to go ahead and get that (laughs) out of the way. Um, I had timers going and I, I was like, okay, I have 30 minutes left in this timer. So I need to add within two minutes of this ending. And I must have said 19 minutes instead of 29 minutes or 28 minutes i don't know what i was thinking um 
I'm sure Anyways, it's I, fine. I put it in, I put the aroma hops in. So the, the hops that you put in, I guess we should explain for people. Um, the earlier you put in the hops, it's more about flavoring and bittering. So those are your bittering hops that you put in at the beginning of the process. And then the later in the process, the later in the boil that you add your hops, those are more for aroma. Yep. So mine actually came with aroma hops and you're supposed to put them in with two minutes left in the boil. So those are really for the fragrance. Uh, but I put mine in with like 10 minutes left on accident. So we'll see if that probably makes a little bit of a difference, but I mean, I don't have like something else to compare it to, so I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll probably just be a stronger taste and maybe not as much as of, of an aroma, but yeah, I'm sure you'll exactly. have plenty of aroma. Exactly. That's unfortunate to hear that you didn't have ice because that was definitely a key step um, because after the boil completes, you have to cool the wort. Is it? I don't know at what point it becomes a mash. At some point it becomes a mash. I don't know if that's like earlier or later, but regardless, you have to cool your wort as quickly as possible um, after I, the boil has stopped. That's like the key. I think it's a mash after after the boil. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think so. Up. Um, so because the faster the wart or mash cools, the less chances of bacteria, um, infiltrating, you know, the less, the lesser your chances are. So it basically tells you put a lid on it, dunk your whole pot in a sink full of ice and cold water, which is exactly what I did. I have an ice maker in my, mach- in my refrigerator and it holds like a ridiculous amount of ice. I'm, like, I'm not sure why they ever needed a residential refrigerator to hold this much ice, but I guess it's for these rare occasions where you need to fill a cooler <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I just dumped the entire thing into the sink and, and put some cold water in there and then, and dunked my pot in with a lid on it. And it took a while for, I think it had to get down to below 75 degrees. Right. It, it took mine a while to get there. I'd say probably somewhere in the ballpark of 15 to 20 minutes to get it down that low. Yeah. Yeah, same here. But that gave me enough time for sanitization. <laughs> oh yes, yes. I think we must have. I skipped over that. Um, so do you do you want to no, explain the importance of the sanitization? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I didn't. So this is when I did my sanitization. It says to do it at the beginning, at, at like the beginning of the booklet. But I did mine like during this step because it also says to do it, um, you know, during this step. So. You know, as it was cooling off, basically, they give you this little packet, um, and you're using half the packet. You put it into like a a, a large bucket if you have one, and yep. then you're soaking everything, everything that touches that wart. In it's got to be soaked in this sanitization uh, solution, um, because if 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 there's any bacteria, any um, you know, any sneaky bacteria getting into your your wart as it's fermenting or your mash or i'll have to find out the specifics on what i'm calling it the <laughs> but i think it's a i think it's a wart i think the mash down is when you're boiling it and then i think it's a wart after the boil while it's fermenting but after uh, while it's fermenting but um yeah if you get any random bacteria in there it's gonna sa- it'll probably sour your beer it's basically your beer is going to be infected and it's it's not going to taste as intended. It's going to be sour. It's probably not going to taste very good. Um, it's going to overpower um, the 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 sweetness, the malty, the hops. It's going to overpower all that, and you're basically just going to throw it out. So, um, a lot of emphasis um, on you know while it's cooling to first yep. off get your get it you, you this this process is like the most important process where everything needs to be as clean as you can possibly get it sanitized and then once your beer gets down to temperature you got to get moving yep yeah exactly and i just looked it up just to be clear the wart or sorry the mash is actually when you're steeping the grains in the water that's okay. the mash process okay it becomes a wart after it has been steeped and you add in your um your um uh, Hops, not your hops. Oh, the, the malt. The the yes, the malt. Okay. When you add the malt in, that then it becomes a wart. <clears throat> um, got it. Got it. So now that we're clear on that, but yeah, yeah, it, the sanitization part, I was like super sketched out about, like just based on like what the book said. I was like, oh my gosh, if any bacteria from the air gets into this wart, it's completely ruined. I can't. This is too stressful. 
Yeah. So like literally every time I touched anything, I like I touched my like, my face and I was like, oh my gosh, and I like, stick my hand down in the sanitization sl- uh, solution <laughs> or like just anything. I'm like, oh, that spoon touched the counter. Not cool. Stick yeah. it down in the thing. Right. Um, I mean, again, I have two kids and who knows what kind of bacteria they're carrying on their little fingers around the house. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How did, so, so the hardest thing for me was sanitizing the, um, the carboy. Yeah. So I basically poured in probably two or three, three to five cups of sanitization liquid into it and just kind of shook it around just for like yeah. a minute. Yep. And then you don't actually have to rinse it. It's like a, it's a no rinse sanitizer. So sanitization, whatever you call it, powder stuff. Um, so you don't have to rinse it out. You basically just swish it around in there, pour it out and then let it dry. And that's all I did. Yeah. That's all I did too. I wasn't sure what to do. Cause I was like trying to dunk it. I was like, this isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> You'd need a lot of liquid. <laughs> I know. I know it totally wasn't working. So, um, but yeah, nice. I did the same thing you did. And just shook it up for a while. Speaking of shaking. Well, okay. So, (laughs) so, all right. So after everything was sanitized, right, then we, you have to move the wart into the carboy. Um, you know, so I didn't, I didn't take any videos or or pictures of this because honestly I had to have my wife come in and, and hold the, um, the strainer for me, like I was talking about earlier. So, um, had to use the funnel, put the funnel in the carboy and put the strainer in between the, the wart and the, and the, uh, carboy and, and, and whatnot. And so I just started pouring it out and it took me a while to pour it in there. Yeah. Um, but got it all in there and, um, there's a one gallon marker on the carboy and I yep. wasn't there. Right. So I was, I was kind of far off from that. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe I left a cup out or something of the gallon of the gallon when I started it. Um, so I had to add some water at the end of it uh, yep. to get it up to a gallon. Um, did you have to do that? Yep. Yep. Same thing here. I actually was pretty far off as well. I mean, it just, you're boiling something for an hour. Clearly some stuff's going to evaporate. <clears throat> um, and you mentioned that you had a lot of sludge and stuff at the bottom of yours. That's coming from the hops and things that you add in, which obviously those hops are absorbing some of that water and you're not, you're not pouring that directly in. Right. I will say what my only criticism to this point so far is the one gallon marker on the carboy was very unapparent to me. Oh yeah. So it says it's, a, it's like an embossed um, text on the side of the glass carboy, which says one gallon, which mind you, the letters themselves are like a quarter inch tall, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm like, is that the line for one gallon? I'm like exa- examining this bottle and like trying to figure out where is this, this one gallon line because I filled it up to that, the letters essentially. Yep. And I'm like, this feels like more than a gallon to me. Um, you know, comparing to like a gallon of milk, I'm like, this right. seems like a lot, but right. You know, right. that's just what I, ju- I didn't have anything else to base it off of. So that's what I'm assuming the correct line is. So I would say in the future crafted brew, would potentially put a more apparent line there. Yeah. So we know exactly where it needs to go. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I was pretty far off as well. So I had to add some, it says to add cool water again. This is another spot where I was like a little bit, um, sketched out because i'm like it can't be this water can't be above 75 degrees because it's gonna be hotter than my beer it's gonna create bacteria also it's tap water i don't know how clean this tap water is but it says to do it so my wife was like should you use distilled water i'm like it doesn't say so so i don't know i guess not (laughs) i was thinking that too because when i was sanitizing it i used tap water um and it's like you know hopefully the sanitization solution took care of everything but yeah uh, you know, for topping it off, I went to the bottom of the one gallon marker. Um, so I might be, maybe missed out on a, on a little bit of fluid there, but, uh, we have a Berkey shout out Berkey. Um, so we use the Berkey water, so I'm not too worried about that, but you never yeah. know. You never know. I'm always a little bit worried. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to the bacteria, man, I'm like this faucet that the water is coming out of probably has bacteria on it. It's getting into the water as it comes. I don't know. I'm sure like that. I started to like put myself into like a craft breweries, like actual, you know, facility. And I'm like, there's no way they can eliminate every single bacteria known to man in these right. like breweries. I mean, come on. So I think we're being a little bit too anal, but I don't know. You never know. So yeah, I mean, I had to fill mine up as well. And then at that point, 
once you verify that the wort is below 75 degrees, that's when you add in your yeast. Right. So the the kit comes with a little package of yeast, very small amount. Like if I had to put a measurement on it, probably a tablespoon of yeast. Um, not sure what kind of yeast it is. I don't think it really gave that description, but we mentioned on a show last week that there are different types of yeast that produce different flavors. And we've also mentioned on a previous show a long time ago that if you're not familiar with this process and you're and you're kind of listening to this episode as a, a, a learning experience, um, essentially what yeast does, yeast is a live bacteria. You add it in, yeast eats sugar, and when it eats sugar, it poops out alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Along, along with a lot of flatulence, which produce carbon dioxide, I think, right? Um, yeah gases so that's the fermenting process but in order to in order for the yeast to be activated after you add it you actually have to oxygenate the wort um were you able to get that video in there by chance or what did oh, it not work oh yeah here it is buddy oh yeah look how, goof, look how goofy i look in that i didn't even share mine mine was super mine was goofier than yours did you do a video though oh i got a video it's for, uh, it's not for sharing purposes <laughs> you gotta show me your video <laughs> Stephanie was like, why are you making that face? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, dude, my face my face was kind of weird too. Believe it or not, shaking a gallon of liquid is actually pretty difficult. Yeah, for a minute, just like shaking it over and over again. Yeah, yeah it and, was, I, uh, and also my hands were wet because I was like, my thumb. So so what we didn't explain is after you add the yeast, you have to put in a, you know, a, a, a stopper into the top of the carboy, which has a, like a quarter inch hole in it. You have to plug the hole with your thumb, so your hand has to be clean. So I dunked my hand into the sanitizing solution, um, and then so both my hands are wet. So like holding this thing and shaking it vigorously for a minute with wet hands, I was just like super sketched out that I was gonna drop it and shatter the whole oh, thing. Oh, I the know. Floor. Oh, I know, dude. That's <laughs> how I, I was like, am I gonna drop this thing? Because yeah. it's it's not easy to get a grip on it. It's like a big glass, you know, cylinder, big glass yeah. uh, I, I bottle. Mean, we bo- we both have big hands too. So if you're a person with like little hands, I'm not really sure what your strategy is there. I guess you bear hug it and just run around maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, but it was, so, it, this was one of the funner parts, I think. Um, yeah. Just shaking so, it up. Shake, shake, shake. So yeah, shake, you shake it up f- for a minute and that oxygenates the uh, wart and yeah. the yeast starts to do its thing. Um, and literally you can feel it almost instantly, uh, the pressure behind your thumb. Like it feels like if you, once you release, I was kind of concerned that it was going to spew all over the kitchen, but it doesn't do that. Um, but there definitely is some, some, some gases that are coming out of there. Instantly. But, uh, yeah. So you can see kind of the color of mine there. It's kind of a mustardy color almost. It's very thick. It's going to be very, very hazy. I can see it coming. Yeah. Um, Yours has a much better, more appealing color, if I will say so myself. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show mine now. So the the next steps after you do the shake, um, you run this tube um, into the top of the cap there, um, and then you run the other side of the tube. Basically, you want to fill up a cup of water, and and you know uh, halfway halfway fill that other cup of that cup of water. And you stick the tube in there, and if and if you're looking on screen, you can see the gases are pushing this thing constantly. When I go down there right now, it's moving. This sucker mm-hmm. is moving quick, and I've already had to fill up this glass uh, twice or replace this glass twice, yeah, um, because it keeps you know all the foams getting into it, and uh, you know. So um, the color right now, the color looked a lot better yesterday, and right now it's like very um, musty and and you know, not very see-through. So I'm hoping, um, this kind of, uh, darkens up, I think a little bit more becomes a yeah. little bit more black. Cause right now it's like very Brown and it's, uh, you know, it's not super attractive at this point, but, um, <laughs> it, it, it looked really good. Um, in some of my other pictures from yesterday. The f- yeah. The first picture you sent me, it looked great. It looked really good. Yeah. It was like um, super dark and it looked amazing. And, now the yeast is in there doing all this work and it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's the same way, dude. Mine's definitely not attractive right now at all. Um, but I think once you add the cocoa nibs into yours, it's probably going to darken up a lot. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I think after a week of of this, so so what you guys are seeing on screen right now is the is the yeast is basically eating the sugars, you know, pooping out alcohol and releasing gases, and the gases yep. are coming out, and you have to create this. Um, uh, I don't know if it's like a vacuum. I can't remember what oh. they were what they called it. Oh, I didn't realize this was a video. I'm now seeing the movement in the video. Yeah, yeah, it's it's moving very slowly. It's on like a five second loop. Um, but it's it's this airtight kind of seal basically, and yeah. you let this go on for uh, three days essentially. So the yeast is mostly doing all of its explosive action in the first forty eight hours. Um, so after three days, um, you can take this tube out you can remove the glass um and you put this little water um what did they call it an airlock an airlock okay you put this little airlock inside the tube and it should um you won't have all this foam coming out at that point it should just let the extra gases just right out the top and there's like a little water um portion to it so that um it's not like exploding out and no bacteria gets back in the water right. is like, uh, you know, uh, how do you, I don't really know how to explain I think, it. So I think what's happening right now, and you're seeing the tube on the screen, the tube's going into a half glass, a half full glass of water. The water can't travel up the tube into the carboy. Um, right. So no air can pass through into the tube, but the gases are coming out of the tube and can float up out of the water. So essentially the, once the activity, this, this initial activity has passed, um, and it's not as much gas being created. The airlock does the exact same thing. You put a little bit of water in the airlock, stick it in the top of the stopper, so no air can come through the water, because obviously air is lighter than water, or less dense than water. Um, can't go through the water, but the gases can escape out of the water. So only yep. things can come out, nothing can go in. So that's essentially what it's doing. So you have to let it ferment. Ours is actually surprisingly the same. I thought for sure yours would be longer than mine, but it actually, I think it's the same exact schedule. So after you put the airlock in, it's, well, actually, as soon as you start fermenting, it's two weeks from that point. Uh, wait, sorry. Three weeks. So both of ours is actually one week. Then you add additional ingredients in. So for mine, I'm adding in oak chips to bring out that oak, oak um, aged flavor, which also I feel very misled as a consumer at this point. So... Now I know when I purchase a beer that says oak aged, it definitely was not aged in oak barrels. No, probably not. You sneaky sons of guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you added oak chips. No, I'm just kidding. But not really. Um, so then yours, you <laughs> add in cocoa nibs at one week. Yep. Um, and then you continue to let it ferment, both of ours, for two additional weeks. Yeah, and exactly. At that point, you've reached the bottling procedure which we obviously are not at yet so we can't really speak to what that experience is going to be like yet but we based on reading the booklet seems like that might be a complicated not complicated but cumbersome process that requires um they even say grab a friend to help you out it makes it a lot easier i'm sure because somebody's got to hold the bottle while you're pouring out of the jug which which makes sense um you know, and, and you have to sanitize all of those bottles as well. So, you know, they had to save half the sanitization packet. And and so we'll go through that same sanitization process because I think once you put them in the bottle, they got to go for another two weeks before you can drink them. So you got to let them sit in the bottle for two yep. weeks, which I found that was kind of interesting. So it's got to do a little bit more shelf uh, shelf sitting. But um, yep. I, I'm going to have, you know, there's going to be six bottles basically that I'm going to drink myself. And then the other six I'm going to be saving for people. And yeah. some of those bottles might sit for like months. Um, exactly. So I'm kind of interested to see like, what's it going to be like after, after three months, you know, or more. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, man. Um, it said my, or at least my booklet said that the longer it ferments in the bottles, the fermentation, I think we actually skipped over a step. You, before you bottle it, you actually boil in some sugar with a certain amount of water. Um, and then you mix in the wort with that sugar water using the tubing that was supplied with the kit. There's a tubing, the tubing that we've already shown. You put in the, the wort with that sugar water. And then from there, you mix that all together. 
um, and then you bottle that because the sugar water actually gives the yeast some more fuel to continue doing its thing. And then so once you put all that into the bottles, the yeast continues to eat and it creates the carbon dioxide that's required for um, carbonation. Oh, so when okay. you pop the lid and you get that, that's from the yeast doing its thing after bottling. Um, and it also says the longer you let it sit in the bottles, the more mellow the flavors will be, at least for mine. I'm not sure what yours says in that regard. Um, but yeah, two additional weeks once it hits the bottles, again, stored stored in a cool, dark place. Actually, I'm wrong. It says store in a warm, dark place once it's been bottled. So, yeah, because it's. I think it's got to be room temperature, right? Like seventy-five degrees. You just want to keep it kind of at that yeah. seventy-five degree marker the whole time until you're yeah. ready to drink it. Yep. So then it says refrigerate and enjoy. So obviously more to come on that. I'm looking forward to the bottling process. Um, can't wait. I actually saw one of the podcasts we follow. I think it was Beers and Beards was the podcast. Um, they actually just brewed their own beer in collaboration with somebody else, I believe. And uh, had some labels printed up with their podcast logo to put on the bottles. Nice. Um, pretty cool. I don't know. Maybe we'll do something like that. Oh, maybe, dude. maybe one day in the future. <laughs> gears are sp- the gears are spinning, man. Why yeah. would you say that? <laughs> yeah. So shout out Beers and Beards podcast. I think it was I think it was those guys. But anyways, I mean overall I think the process was very smooth. I think in in total for both of us, I think it was about two and a half to three hours. You know, the boil itself was the longest part, 60 minutes. But just getting your water to temperature, letting things cool, sanitizing, transferring, like all in. I wasn't expecting it to take that long, but it was an easygoing process, taking taking about three hours. Yep. Yeah. I think it was fun. It flew by, you know. Um, yeah. You know, I... You know, during like the hour long boil session, I wasn't watching it the whole time, but almost almost most of that time you're pretty engaged with it, whether it's just kind of sitting and waiting or just standing by and like playing on your phone and waiting for the next steps. But yep, yeah, um, it was fun. I I definitely want to do it again. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be. And um, I'm going to be pretty proud when it's done. I can't wait to drink mine. Exactly. I definitely mirror that sentiment. Um, And, And yours. I want to try yours, too. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely be swapping for sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really excited to try it. Hopefully it turns out good. Regardless, I'm definitely going to do it again. Um, I think I'll stick with Craft to Brew for a while, like until, you know, you get your brewing chops, I guess. I know they make like homebrew, they're, not make, there are homebrew stores that you can go to and buy all these different ingredients, make your own combination of hops and yeast and malts and um, build your own recipes. But for now, I mean, like I'm pretty content a gallon is plenty for me. I like to mix up my beers quite often, and I don't have that many people coming by my house that I can give away a lot of beer to. <laughs> so yeah. um, I like to keep it fresh. So I think one gallon brew is totally fine for me. Um, and reusing the equipment that was provided, just buying the tw- – actually, I think some of the brew kits or some of the uh, recipe kits are only $15 on their site. Right. So you can try out a lot of different things for a very low cost. Um so i definitely excited about that. Yep. Started with a good one. There's definitely a couple other ones. Like there's a Belgium beer. There's a, a Belgium double. There's an Oktoberfest that I want to try. Uh, there's like five different uh, pale ales. Yep. Um, you know, so there's a, there's a ton of different options on there. Uh, Pilsners. Um, I can't remember what else, but, you know, you name it. They got it. Seltzers. They got something uh, for everybody. I think they, they got a s- cider. Yep, they have a cider kit. They also have a gin kit, which is interesting. Nice. Um, I'm not sure what the legalities are around making your own gin. <laughs> it seems like it should be illegal, but I don't know. That's uh, weird. Yeah, interesting. The cider one actually looked interesting. I did not realize, which now it makes more sense, now having gone through this brewing process, that cider really is just apple juice plus yeast makes That's an it. alcoholic cider. I did not even like no, – I never put two and two together. That really, you know, there's tons of sugar in apple juice or hard apple cider or, or apple cider. You add some yeast to it, let it ferment, and then there you go. That's so simple. Right? Yeah. I kind of want to, like, do something, like, really weird, like pomegranate juice with yeast or something and just see what happens, mm. you know? Could be good, man. Could be good. Yeah. 
Um, Wait, so what about I, like orange juice, like alcoholic I, orange juice? I was literally just thinking that it's like a screwdriver all in one. Yeah. Ugh, why hasn't awful. anybody? It's gotta why be terrible. Anyone, yeah, probably. Why hasn't anyone done that? Interesting. Probably because it's, it's terrible. Pr- yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> probably taste. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think overall, though, I, 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 you know, for reviewing Craft of Brew, I'd say kudos to Craft of Brew. Everything from the packaging the design on the box itself the unboxing experience everything was very well put together everything you need is included in the box minus the bottles and the capping kit very affordable step-by-step guides were definitely on point everything was there i was never confused at any point in the process um extremely pleasant experience so i think hats off to crafter brew for making such a pleasant kit and for you know Basically, I, in my mind, it's just reducing the barrier to entry when it comes to home brewing. You know, like I oh, said yeah. at the beginning of this thing, I was intimidating, intimidated by it um, and hesitant to get into home brewing because it seems like something that's complicated that you have to have a lot of experience and knowledge in. But when you get something like this, um, you know, it just makes it so much easier and hopefully rewarding once it's completed. Yeah, man, I'm right there with you. I'm very interested to see how this is going to turn out, but I'm more interested to see, like, now that I understand the process more and I've done it, I want to, like, break it down a little bit more to understand, like, you know, like, what was the grain selection here? And how do you get the different flavors based on the grains that you want? What are the different grains that they're using and the differences there? Same with the yeast and same with the hops. Like, yeah. And the malt, even even the malt, it's like what are what what makes up those four ingredients that you know um, gives you all of these different flavors and whatnot. So there's so much to learn there. And yep. like you said, um, I'll probably just stick with the kits for a while. And then, I mean, I think the main goal someday is to like come up with something that you know is my recipe and try and mold it to be something that's like tasty that I want to keep doing. Yeah. And then <laughs> talk to my wife about buying bigger equipment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, honey. So listen, we need to put a garage up. We need to put a building in the backyard. That's at least this big <laughs> starting the ginger and the beard brewery. I've been really nice lately. I've been doing the dishes every day, babe. Come on. <laughs> yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that about covers it, unless you can think of anything else to add. No, I, I definitely recommend Craft a Brew to everybody. If you guys like beer, you got to try it. It's super simple. If you got three hours and fifty dollars, go do it, man. It's totally worth it. You'll be, you'll be happy. You'll be happy doing it. You'll be happy after you're done with it. Yep. And then um, once you are done with it, you got to let us know how it turned out for you. Yeah, it's like this new exciting thing I have. It's currently like in my closet fermenting. I check it like every 30 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> how's it looking? Yep, still in there, still, still bubbling. All right, did- <laughs> close the door. <laughs> my, awesome. only, my only fear now is that my kids find it in the closet and like just pick it up and dump it out on the floor because that's something oh, they would do. Oh, no. <laughs> so I think, oh, after no. The, I think after I put the airlock thing on, I'm going to put it like, up in this closet behind me, like up on a shelf. So there's no way they could, but then again, I can't do that because there's a dryer in there and the dryer gets hot. And like I can't do that. Mm, yeah. So All that fluctuation. Somewhere. But yeah, so that's about it guys. Yeah. So craft to beer, craft to brew, check them out for sure. Um, I think it's about time we close out the show, but before we do so, I just want to remind you guys one last time to, to check us out on YouTube. If you're, if you're listening to this in your car right now, I really would suggest you check this video out on YouTube because we do show a lot of images and things like that. Each week we, we like to interject some images into our episodes most of the time. And we're usually just cracking up and having a great time. So make sure you check us out there, but also follow us on Spotify. Um, leave us a review on Apple podcasts. If that's your, if that's your podcast player of choice. And then most importantly, just share with a friend. Um, if you know somebody who's into craft brewing, into craft beers, technology, video games, that, that sort of stuff that we talk about every Friday. Make sure you share our show with that friend. And then last last but not least, just interact and engage with us. We, we want to get to know you guys, want to hear from you guys, and want to know about your experiences with, with brewing or with technology, video games, and those sort of things. So 
Make sure you check us out on Instagram and Twitter. We're very active on both platforms. Feel free to leave us a comment or shoot us a message. Um, you know, we'll, we're, we're always excited to hear from our audience. So make sure to find yeah. us there. And if you're a podcaster yourself and you're listening, hit us up, guys. We'll check you out. Um, if, if, you know, let us know what you guys are into and we'll give you guys a listen. And, you know, uh, we're all about networking and learning from others. So just, uh, you know, uh, reach out to us. We're, we're, you know, we won't bite. We're pretty friendly people most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> Just kidding, all the time. <laughs> and you, if you work at Craft or Brew, hit us up. We want to talk. Yes, 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 definitely. All right, man. Well, I think that about does it. So you guys out there listening right now, make sure you check us out on Friday. We'll be having our regular, regularly scheduled um, podcast where we're talking with lots of tech news this week already. It's Tuesday. Lots oh, of tech man. news out there. Can't wait to talk about that. Some news from Oculus, some news from Apple. Yes, sir. So a lot of fun stuff to talk about, UFC shenanigans, all kinds of good stuff. So tune in again on Friday at 10 o'clock p.m., 10 p.m. Eastern, if you want to watch this live on Twitch or stay tuned for the recorded version to come out on Saturday. Yeah, guys, make sure to do that. Um, and, and don't miss out. Tomorrow, Facebook Connect 7 uh, in about 15 hours from now. So just go to facebookconnect.com to check that out, the official reveal of the Oculus Quest 2 and more. Uh, we'll be talking about that on Friday. Uh, hope to see you then. You're good. At, you're so good at math. That, that, <laughs> fifth, that 15 hours just came right off your head, like with no hesitation. <laughs> I don't actually, impressive. I should, I should probably look up and see what actual time it is because by the time somebody hears no, this, no, just play it off. You're good. You're I'm good. Just <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you guys on Friday. All right, guys. Later. See ya.